One of the greatest challenges in performing a cataract surgery for a patient who's undergone a previous radial keratotomy is the actual calculation of the IOL power for that particular case. This video aims at improving your understanding of how to work up a patient who's had a previous radial keratotomy and who presents to you desiring cataract surgery. So at the outset, you go on to Google and you type ASCRS.org and you also type in post refractive surgery calculator. The next document is extremely important. It is a disclaimer that actually says that this IOL calculator is only meant to work as an adjunct tool which can assist the physician in selecting the correct IOL power and it needs to be used in conjunction with a thorough eye examination along with the appropriate diagnostic tests and measurements that are required to decide what is the IOL power and that the surgeon himself that is the one who actually chooses what is the IOL power is completely responsible for the end result. In the following page, you get to choose which was the previous refractive surgery done. Was it a hyperopic or a myopic LASIK or was it a radial keratotomy? Once you accept this disclaimer where you take full responsibility of the end result of the cataract surgery, you then move to the next page, which is the workup sheet. Here, you first fill in all the preliminary data required for patient identification. Then, in case the decision is already taken as to which was the IOL model that you want to use, you fill in that and then you come to the target refraction. Now, we do know that patients who are undergoing radial keratotomy have a potential for having a post-operative drift towards hyperopia. Now, the extent of hyperopia would depend upon, of course, the biomechanics of the patient's cornea, but also the number of cuts that are taken and the depth to which they are taken. Keeping this in mind, therefore, if you had a patient with an 8 RK cut cornea, you could perhaps aim for a target refraction of minus 1. And so also, if suppose the patient had a 16 RK cut cornea, you could aim for a target refraction of minus 2. There is no definite existing rule to follow, and perhaps you can work this out either based on your own experience as it builds or based on the experience of others. The next section deals with the pre-RK data and more often than not, this data is not really accessible to us because the radial keratotomy has often taken place many years ago. Please note that this data is not mandatory to calculating on this site. The next section deals with the refraction in the post-RK period. Now, we are looking at if at all it is possible to get a stable refraction approximately a year after radial keratotomy in an eye which has had a radial keratotomy but where there is no pre-existing cataract. That is important. And it is extremely important to remember that very often you do not have a stable refraction one year after radial keratotomy. And if that is the case, that is if you have a fluctuating refraction, it's very well to leave this column also unfilled. That is, it is not mandatory to have this data to use this IOL calculator. Next, we come to the topography. Now, the data that we need to fill in actually depends upon which is the topographer that we are going to be using. So, if it were an atlas topographer, it's going to ask you for the keratometric reading at the 1, 2, 3, 4 millimeter zone. Similarly, there will be different parameters that are asked if you're going to use a shine flag or a pentacam. And finally, if you're going to use an OCT-based system, the net corneal power, the posterior corneal power, as well as the central corneal thickness. Topography is of significant importance not only for getting these values but also for looking at the topography maps as to what is the quality of the central cornea. Is it regular? Is it irregular? Is it regularly irregular or is it irregularly irregular? A cornea which appears on topography to be irregularly irregular is one that should get you thinking that here's a patient who is likely to have a suboptimal end result because an irregularly irregular cornea is going to cause significant amount of aberrations, a reduction in an overall visual quality, a reduced corneal contrast, and finally all of these reasons are going to result with a possibility of a suboptimal visual end result following cataract surgery.
We now come to biometry. The gold standard, needless to say, would be an optical biometry. Now, if you have no access to an optical biometer and cannot even outsource it for anywhere else, you could go ahead and fill in your data from your emotion scan. If you do have access to the optical biometer, please fill in all the relevant data that has been asked for. Then you move to filling in the A constant of the IOL that you're planning to use, after which you hit calculate. And when you go into the lower part of the page, you will see about five formulae, most of which do not require any previous data, just based on your topography and based on your optical biometry. It gives you then five different values based on the five different formulae. Finally, it also gives you a maximum and a minimum and then suggests what is the average power that the surgeon can then consider choosing. This completes the tutorial on IOL power calculation in eyes that have undergone a previous radial keratotomy. Thank you.